Uh, good morning. How are good you? Good morning. Good morning. How are you, AJ? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm amazing. I feel like we should take a minute um, here while we get started just to kind of explain why we want to do this. What do you think? Yeah, good start. Right. So I think um, the way that I've been thinking about this, at least in my, in my brain, is um, some of my favorite memories uh, in working on staff and churches, are some of these uh, times when we would like grab a cup of coffee, which I have, by the way, and sort of walk into um, walk into somebody's office and kind of sit down and, and work through an issue or talk through something or just kind of get to know one another a little bit more. And I'm not sure how productive uh, those little chats would be, but they were certainly some of the, <laughs> so uh, I, we should change the name, right? To come waste time with us for 30 minutes. Um, but uh, that's where we built relationships and that's where we built friendships. And so those were some of my favorite moments. And we really want these to be like that. The The webinars are great, but they're training intensive and they're not necessarily community building. So we're going to be going through some some stuff for sure. Think, some things that we think will encourage you and uplift you and hopefully inspire you a little bit, push you a little bit. But the goal is to be interactive. So as you have questions or comments, please type them in and AJ is going to be watching for those. Um, I will do my best. Yes. So when you see me looking all around, trying to figure out what I'm looking at, probably trying to figure out who's saying what. So awesome. But hey, it's live. We can do weird things, I guess that you wouldn't expect anything less from a live thing, would you? No, absolutely not. And it's our first one. We'll get we'll get good feedback and we'll make adjustments. So topic today is three reasons why we think you should be excited about your church. Not just like churches in general should be excited about church in 2019, but real reasons why you, like you specifically, can be excited about your church in 2019. So um, that's what we're, we're tackling today. And we've got, so three things. So when, uh, we'll just hop straight in here with number one. Let's go. Okay. Time's a waste. Number one, number one. And uh, all right. So I get it, like the church space is not supposed to be competitive, right? It's not supposed to be, but it can feel that way. You know, church down the street gets a new building or a new church plant comes in town. People start to feel a little bit threatened or your church has maybe seen some decline in the last few years and people are sort of moving to a different church and you can start to feel like just discouraged. Mm -hmm. you know, why, why, why put in the effort because there's some other church down the road that's doing good things and that's the church that people want to go to so that that's sort of like the negative that people have in their brain but so here's here's why we think you should be optimistic and excited about your church in 2019 the opportunity to impact um lost people in your in your county not just in america in general but in your specific county we are betting is huge um Lots of people don't know the, the real facts on their county, AJ. That's right. Uh, they go, yeah, we got lost people here where we live. But they might think that just that, that maybe they live in the Bible Belt and everybody's sort of a cultural Christian or whatever. And so yeah. um, they maybe aren't as urgent about it as they should be. So we, AJ and I both also live in the Bible Belt. I live in Sullivan County, Tennessee. Um, AJ lives in in the Metroplex, Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, but kind of a little bit more rural, Johnson County. Right. Texas. So, um, so here's the numbers for, and we're going to show you how you can find this out for, for your county here in just a second. But um, I'll just give you the numbers on mine. So I live, again, Sullivan County, Tennessee. It's East Tennessee. Um, in fact, Chattanooga, which is about three hours away from me, was rated by Barna as like the number one most bible-minded place in america and and uh the tri-cities tennessee which is where i live was in the top 10 i, I believe as well so even in top 10 most bible-minded uh county in america here are the numbers so in sullivan county tennessee there are 87,742 claimed people but wh what they mean by claimed is they're on a roll they're on a roster somewhere mm -hmm. um they may not go to, to church very often or at all, but they're on, they're counted on a roll. They're counted on a roster somewhere uh, at some church in that County. Um, and he, and here's the number of unclaimed people, 69,000, 
and 69,081 is the number of unclaimed people in Sullivan County, one of the top 10 most Bible minded counties in America. Uh, 44% of the population is not even lying about going to church somewhere. If they were, if they were on a roll somewhere, they'd be in that 87,000 number, but they're not. And um, that means when I go to Walmart here, just down the street, um, if I'm in a line with 10 people, four and a half of those people are not going to church anywhere. Nowhere. Like the opportunity to impact lostness is huge. That means that no matter how big the mega church down the street is or how many new church plants come into your town, our bet is the problem of lostness in your county is so great that there aren't anywhere close to the number of churches needed to, to tackle the problem, especially since a lot of churches don't care. You know, they've, they've already given up. And so if you decide to be a church that's not going to give up, we think that's a reason to be excited. There's sure opportunity is. For growth. So AJ, what, let's show folks how they can find out what's going on in their county. All right. Let's do some technology. Let's see here. Share this. Okay. So uh, I'm here at the, uh, the ARDA website. T-H-E-A-R-D-A.com, okay? When you come in here, click on U.S. Congressional Membership. You don't actually, you can just mouse over it. Come over here to reports. And it does a search by zip code or city. I live in the uh, booming metropolis of Joshua, Texas. Click go. And boom, there you go. All right, so we're looking at Johnson County. So it's weird. It You have to search by city or zip code, but it gives you county reports. So it says up here, Johnson County, well, Texas. To be fair, if you live in a big metro area, certain certain spots will give you a metro report, but that's not the norm. Yeah, and you can get there's tons of great data on this website. If you click come over here to maps, you can you can actually um, central down like to your church address, draw a radius yeah. around it, and get all kinds of data um, about your specific area. So great yeah, information here. I think it does it by census blocks. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Um, this uh, webinar is not sponsored by the auto, by the no, way. Definitely not. Not sponsored uh, by anything. <laughs> Except for uh, mypillow.com. I'm <laughs> so, all right. So here's here. Scott just gave you um, gave you his his stats. Um, this is the big number that we always look at whenever. So whenever, you know, we work with churches all over the country. And um, so this is one of the tools that we use. We look up and, and just kind of see what we're what we're looking mm -hmm. at. Um, unclaimed people. So here you go. In my county, 82,000 people um, unclaimed by any res religious affiliation. Um, evangelical Protestants then being um, the top um, associated or claimed group. And then you can see there's just very little of anything else going on. Yeah. So a couple of the things that I like to do whenever I use this report um, and Scott, jump in, you can tell us a little bit about what you do as well. I like to, you can sort by adherence rate. Um, so this will kind of um, yeah. Let's explain really briefly what that means. It means out of a thousand people in the county, two hundred and nineteen right there are are going to be Southern Baptist. That's what yeah. the adherence rate means. Yep. Or simply number of adherents. So this, I guess, actually gets right down into population. Then, right, Scott? That's right. Um, of of how what what they're associated. So we'll just leave it on this for now. So Southern Baptist Convention, a lot of Baptist churches, certainly in Johnson County and in Texas and in the Bible Belt. Um, to be sure. So most of us um, in the South probably are going to find Southern Baptist Convention um, at the top of this list. Not a surprise for me, um, but we're a big Seventh-day Adventist area as well. Um, so they're, they're showing up pretty high. So anyway, your, your results may vary. Um, and something so to bring up too is that non-Christian uh, faiths also show up on there. Now it's usually a pretty small number, but if you kind of add those into the unclaimed like if you figure out all the the folks who are not christian and uh put those in the the category with the unclaimed that number is even bigger so we did That's the math right. we did the math um you, it won't tell you the percentage you got to do the math yourself so what's the what's the math there for johnson county how many what's the percentage for you of what put unclaimed in, yeah put in your uh, notes see i haven't actually done the math <laughs> I did it for you. You're right. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. You did print that out for me, didn't you? You're so good, Scott. Fifty-five percent of my population. Yeah. Unclaimed. Over so, half. And yeah. again, Bible Belt place. Um, 
Something else interesting to look at. I always click on this. So this is this will be updated after the 2020 census. So I don't know how long it takes for them to get their data out, but uh, sure. as you can see, they so they have a 1990 to 2010 change, and then the more recent change. So you can see what has changed in your county or your metro area. Um, so for us, the Seventh Day Adventist Church has grown a lot. Um, Assemblies of God grew a lot. Mormon Church grew a lot. So it gives you a little bit better idea of what's going on in your area. And again, where some opportunities may be. Um, so that's, you know, you know, I've certainly looked at places more in uh, more metropolitan areas, maybe something more um, in um, coastal cities uh, that are less churched than my area. And um, you might be picking up, you know, a, a big increase in uh, Muslim or Buddhist, um, you know, some other non-Christian religions that may be an area, um, you know, that you could strategize in your evangelism. Yeah. And for so. what it's worth, I think it's mentioning too, that I, I think in the three years, at least that I've been doing, running these reports, I've never once come across uh, a county and was like, well, never mind, like <laughs> mission accomplished. Um, the numbers are bad um, in, in every county I've ever looked at. So, we think that's a reason for you to be excited. You should be excited because not because there are a lot of lost people. That is not a reason to be excited. You should be excited because there's a great opportunity to impact um, lost people in your county. So don't get distracted by who's doing what down the street. It doesn't matter. Like there's there is more than enough kingdom ministry to go around. Um, Absolutely. And and you are needed. And your church is needed. And your leadership is needed. Like don't give up. Don't don't get discouraged. So that's number one. Yep. Let's move on. Topic two. Topic two. All right. So um, we actually ran a poll um, on our this new page uh, early in early days of it, all the way back to last Thursday, I think, when we started it. So very long time ago. And uh, we asked, what's the number, what's kind of the, the biggest challenge you're facing right now in your ministry? And um, gave some options and let you add some if you wanted to. And, and here were the the top five things that came up. Number one, unwillingness to change was number mm. one. Uh, uh, unwillingness of the church to change. Number two, a lack of vision in the church. Number three, low volunteer engagement. Hard to get folks mobilized in the congregation. Number four, staffing issues um, in the church. Number five, declining giving. Um, now, it was a relatively small sample size, so I don't want to set this out like it's some sort of scientific poll. It's not. Um, but I imagine if we were to do it the right way and, and get it in front of a, a broader audience and, and do a scientific poll, we'd probably see um, most, if not all of these five issues come up again and again. Maybe the order would be different, but I think we'd see these same issues again and again and again. And so, you know, a lot of folks are entering, 20, entering 2019 facing some major challenges. And so a reason why we think you should be excited is that um, it's never been easier to get help in than it is in 2019, right? Like never in your life. So I mean, That's just right. imagine being sort of a 19th century <laughs> preacher, pastor in Sullivan County, Tennessee, here where I live. If you had some sort of problem with your congregation, now I recognize that they didn't have the same issues in, in the 19th century, but they still had issues. Every church has always had issues. If you had an issue or you had a problem, you were, there's no major seminary nearby. You're writing, you're writing a letter, right? Yeah. To a friend. Where's you, my quill uh, and my parchment? <laughs> I have to inquire about my congregation. <laughs> you know, you'd have to send something out and wait for a reply and maybe it would be helpful or maybe they'd be like Job's friends and no, no help at all. You know, or, or you'd have to find a book, you know, and depending on how rural it you was. You think there were like, books i don't know if they had i mean they had books i don't know if they had church help books or yeah, not there was no aubrey malfer's book <laughs> in, in 1811 i don't think i don't know but it was hard the point to is, the lifeway general store yeah. <laughs> it was just difficult to find it. now in 2019 it's not is there help it's do you want help yeah i'm not talking about this is not a sales pitch by the way i'm talking about like if you like there's free help for almost every challenge you're facing. Absolutely. Um, let's give some examples. 
So if you were having trouble with giving, we did a free webinar last year on zero-based budgeting, tackled giving a little bit in that. Um, low volunteer engagement, we did two webinars last fall, one on um, pipeline, leadership pipeline, and one on mo mobilizing the congregation, recruiting more volunteers. Um, those were free. Uh, mm -hmm. Upcoming vision webinar, we have one coming up. Um, so if you have trouble with vision, that's, that's another free thing we're doing. And it's, again, this is not a TMG promotion. It's not just us. I got an email yesterday from Sunday U. I think it's a Justin Dean's company and they just added a free tier for their stuff. And it's bunch, like tons of training videos on church communication stuff, social media graphics and things like that. Um, some of them are free. Some of them you buy, uh, staffing issues, Vanderblumen, you don't have to hire them to, to, to get access to all the articles and mm -hmm. blogs and things that they've written and webinars that they've done. Um, other Facebook groups other than this one, um, there's this little thing called Google. So if you have a problem, Google can probably point you in the right direction. Um, one little pitch, not one that we get any money from, but we're partners with a group called 95 Network. Their hearts for, well, actually, AJ, you want to share a little bit about kind of 95 Network? Yeah, 95 Network. So uh, we uh, great friends over there. Those guys, their heart is for small churches, small, medium-sized churches. So, yeah. um, which is 85, 95%. Is that where they get their 95 from? That's where the um, 95 comes from. Like 95% of the churches are like 500 a week in attendance or less. Um, yeah. It's a very high number. Uh, chances are, if you're watching this, you probably are in that space. So, yeah, um, so yeah they're, they're providing um, grant funding um, mm -hmm. for, for them to, for churches in that space to be able to get some, uh, some quality help, but they also, they have a $95 a year, um, network subscription that yeah. provides them tons of great resources. We're contributing to that. Um, other, uh, other consulting firms are contributing to that. Yeah. And so that is a, that's a great resource. Yeah. And full disclosure, sure. we don't, I mean, we're, we're saying, Hey, you should check that out. We don't get any of that $95 by the way. Like, we just think that's a good resource that you should yeah. check out. Just, um, yeah, there's just one of many, like Scott is saying. I mean, you just can't, um, you can't go online and search for anything that you probably will not find somebody talking about having had that issue before yeah. and at least making suggestions on things to try. So, right. so that's the point there is that the reason you should be excited is if you have a problem, it's not, is there help or is there resources or can you, can you find what you need? It's just, do you want to do it? Like, do you want to put in the effort? Do you want to find the sort resource you need? Do you want to tackle the problem? Because if you do, there is help. And it's easier to get help now than it has ever been mm -hmm. to get help. Um, and I think that is a good thing. Um, all right. We want to move on to number three, hey? Let's go. Number three. Number three. All right. This might be the most controversial thing. I'm not trying to stir any controversy because um, it's theological in nature and it's, it, it's this. So a lot of people are kind of entering 2019 again, kind of up against the wall, struggling, frustrated, disappointed maybe, or discouraged at what's happened in 2018. Maybe you didn't get done what you wanted to get done. You didn't see the change you wanted to see. And so I think it's easy for us to get, and I'm, and I say, us, like me included, get trapped in sort of this neo-Puritan 21st century American perspective of, I just got to work harder and pull myself up by yeah. my bootstraps, right? Like mm -hmm. the reason why I'm not seeing the change is that I'm not stepping up enough. And that is just not at all sort of the theological uh, st story that we see in scripture. Like it's just not. So the reason why you should be excited about your church in 2019 is that God is for you. God is for you. And he is fundamentally in his DNA, a, a giver. He's a giver. I just want to give you some examples straight from scripture, James chapter one, verse five. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach. He's not going to be angry that you're asking for wisdom or you're asking for help. He gives it generously and it will be given to him. Matthew 7, 11. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven 
give what is good to those who ask him. Acts chapter 17, verse 25. Nor is God served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all people life and breath and all things. Romans 8, 32. He who d- did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? And then here's the piece I really want you to hear. John 10, 10. The thief comes to uh, to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Now, this is not a prosperity gospel deal. Like name it, claim it. You know, you want a million dollars, you just ask for it. And, you know, God, the genie, just boom, you've got it. That is not what I'm saying. At we all. would benefit from a jet, though. Yes. I would, I would like to interject that. That I would, would be helpful. love a jet. That would be great. <laughs> or a million dollars. I'd take that. Yeah. Um, it doesn't, but it doesn't, doesn't work that way. But what I am saying is that God is fundamentally a giver. Mm-hmm. He gives. He gives. And we like to go to uh, Job 121 and say, well, the Lord has given, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that is such a worshipful comment by Job in trouble. But that's not what happened, right? The story of Job is that God gave permission to Satan to test Job, and Satan took away Mm -hmm. these things from Job. It wasn't the Lord. From Job's perspective, he assumed it must be God, but it wasn't. It was Satan. And when we get to the end of Job, God gives back to Job double everything that he lost. Um, Everything, double, except for the kids. He gets the same number of kids that passed away. He gets the same number of kids. And the reason why he doesn't get double is because people aren't lost, right? Um, God was holding the kids who passed in his hand, and so he gets the same number of kids. And so he has two times the kids in total, right? So God is a giver. And, and, and he's not a taker away. He doesn't give us things just to take it away. He's not cruel like that. He doesn't right. give us, uh, he doesn't give us our salvation just to take it away. He doesn't give us Jesus just to take him away. He doesn't give us our ministry just to take it away. And so there might be seasons and difficulty and trial and trouble, but God is fundamentally for you. He is fundamentally a giver. And uh, a verse I use with churches all the time comes from um, Haggai chapter two, where um, the Lord says, work for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. Um, he's saying, just do the work. I'm, and I, I'm for you. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. I'll give you the victory. Right. Yep. So um, again, not a prosperity gospel thing. Be hundred percent clear on that. But I am saying that James four f- is a significant verse. We have not because we ask not. And I wonder if some of us have become discouraged and we've stopped praying in faith to give us victory over the barriers that we have in our ministry. Yeah. Um, AJ, any more clarification? I feel, I mean, again, I want to be really clear. I'm not preaching a prosperity gospel here. Ask for the things of God, ask for the things that we know um, of God in scripture. I mean, we can understand his character. We can understand his will. We can understand um, what he set out to do in the first century before he left this earth, um, you know, to make and mature disciples be in that space, be asking God how you can best do that. Uh, so yeah, if you, I mean, you've got 41,000 people in your County that, that are unclaimed and, uh, and, you know, by whatever efforts, uh, you put forth, um, one comes to faith in your church. Well, the angels in heaven rejoice. And now there's 41,999 people left, um, because you took one off the list. Uh, so yeah, God is absolutely for you. God wants to see, uh, great things happen in your church. What are great things? Kingdom minded things. Yeah. So, um, yep. so yeah, be in, be in the space, be about what God's about and, and, um, and he will certainly bless you. So, you know, seek, seek his will, um, seek good counsel, um, from your brothers and sisters and, uh, and man charge ahead in 2019. Cause there yeah. is a great, great opportunity to be found. Yeah. Yeah. And the main, the main point of this, is to say, don't give up and don't stop praying. I love the parable, um, and I'm, I'm a bad Bible scholar, and I can't give you the reference, but um, the parable that Jesus tells of the, the person who comes and knocks on the door in the middle of the night, and they, the neighbor who keeps knocking and keeps knocking and keeps knocking. Mm. And, and finally, like out of frustration, the, uh, 
the man opens the door and gives him what he wants, right? Like, uh, if I'm, am I remembering that parable correctly? Yeah. And, and it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's an allusion to what God is like. If, if, if we would, but he's not annoyed by our asking. But if we would continue to petition the Lord and come in faith and ask and ask and ask and ask, um, he's, he's relentless. Really briefly, my daughter, I bought Captain Crunch, which I know very healthy. Don't judge me. I bought some Captain Crunch for my kids. But we had an open box of cereal that um, we, I wanted us to finish the one that was open before I opened a new box. That's reasonable. That's a must. Yeah. Well, it was a must until <laughs> my daughter asked me no less than 100 times, can, I, can we please have the Captain Crunch instead? And you know what? She asked me enough times that I thought, this is just not a hill I'm going to die on. Like, I'm, I'm going to open the Captain Crunch. And, and if I, uh, if, I, if I'm going to capitulate to a three-year-old, like I, I feel like, um, God here who care, God, who knows what we need and cares for us, here's what we ask for when we keep coming to him in prayer and wants to give it to like, he's not a bad dad. He's a much better dad. And he gives us the things that we need when we ask. So, so pray in faith. This is the point. We have got to be looking like a pile of toddlers to him too. Oh my yeah. goodness. So much yeah. grace. Dad, dad, <laughs> dad, daddy, 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 da. Never quite getting it. No. Okay, All Scott, right. we are near we're near the end of our time. Um, yep. Yep. So um, two things. So one, uh, if there's anybody who wants to ask a question, go ahead and type those up. Um, and if you're watching this not live, we'll still follow up with questions later. Um, so feel free to ask, even if you're not watching live, ask questions and, um, and push back. Like if you're like, no, God is, a, you know, fundamentally if someone who takes things away from us, like I want to hear your perspective on that. Um, we've got a, a journal page that I put together for you. You don't have to fill out your email address or anything to get it. I'm going to put it in the comments here in just a second. Um, it's just simple, three simple questions just to kind of reflect on this. Um, um, number one, what's the opportunity for impact in your community? So we want you to go on the Arda and find out the data for your specific county, like find out what that is um, and think about that. What, what kind of impact could you make on that um, in, in 2019? Number two, what's, like, what's an obstacle you're facing right now in ministry? And what's one new resource that you can leverage in 2019? Uh, you know, it might be something from us. It might be something from someone else. We don't really care. We just want you to take advantage of the resources that are available to you in 2019 and think about that. What's, what's one challenge that you have put off uh, dealing with, uh, but there's help for you if you, if you want to get it. And then number three, what are you believing God for in 2019? What are you going to pray for in 2019 and ask and ask and ask, ask in faith. Um, that God might act on your behalf for your church, for the sake of his kingdom, um, the sake of his name and his renown. What, what are you going to ask and pray for in 2019? So I'd love to hear that. That would be a really cool list to hear. I would love to see that on, on our group. So if you guys want to, want to be posting those, that would be, maybe we'll post that tomorrow, like as a question on there. And then, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Respond to that separately. But um, we want to hear that. So, um, there might be, it might be crickets out there. Are there any questions, AJ? Like, uh, no, I mean, I've, I clarified uh, 95 Network's um, web address on there. Right now, no pending questions. Okay. Um, so yeah, 22,000 people watching live right now. So that's, that's great. <laughs> there, People are going to know that you're lying. <laughs> you. Well, we want to thank our sponsor today, MyPillow.com. <laughs> Just kidding. We have no no sponsors, but we're excited about this and um, we're going to be doing some more of these. And if, if you guys have feedback on how to make these kinds of things better, or if there's a better time where, you know, you, you know, a Tuesday mornings are rough because it's that staff meeting day or whatever, give us good feedback and we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can make some adjustments. So, yeah, we're looking forward to bringing some, hopefully some, some uh, good chat topics to you, uh, something yeah. that maybe will help you over a little hump um, if you're there. Um, and, uh, anxious to interact with you. So hundred percent. All right, guys, thanks for joining us for our first T ever TMG live. And we, we love you. We're praying for you. We're here for you and uh, look forward to talking with you more in the comments. Thanks guys. See ya.